Hi, Randy the Mobile Home Guy here again today. We're going to go over today on how to replace a blower motor in a furnace for a mobile home. So we'll look at a few things on different types of motors and how to do that process. Okay, today we're going to assume that you have the blower uh, housing out. So this is the shroud um, that holds the blower motor on top of the furnace. On a Coleman furnace, on the older ones, this one takes a couple screws, pulls out sometimes on the side here. On an intertherm furnace, most oftentimes um, that one's up here and you have a little blower, uh, a little uh, screw on the side of it that you have to take out. But we're going to assume today that you have this already out. So um, we're going to look at a few different types of applications for the motor. So this is the type of motor that we're going to be putting in today. Um, it's a typical one. And it comes off of a Coleman furnace that has a belly band on it. So this little silver thing here comes off. So we're going to look at that. On this is most Coleman designs. Um, most intertherm designs have a um, design that has the legs already attached to the motor itself. So it's going to be the basic idea of how to get the motor out. You just won't do those final steps of putting the belly band on. Once we're done, it'll just come out and then the new one will go right back on without having to do any other steps. But for the Coleman, um, most of those, we'll have to put this belly band back onto the new motor and we'll look at how to get that motor out of there first. Okay, so we're trying to get this motor out, of course, out of this housing. And so, first thing we want to do is we want to go and we want to look at the other side, okay? And what we're looking for here is this little piece right here. This is the end of the shaft of the motor. And hopefully, we have a little bit sticking out. And we'll look at that a little bit. So, what we will need to do is loosen this nut um, or sometimes an Allen wrench. And we're hoping to have a little bit of space right there. And we'll look at why that is. So we've turned the motor on its side and laid it facing up here with the shaft here facing up. This is the shaft and we can see on the shaft there's a, a, a flat side. And so what we're going to do, um, and we can see how it's sticking out there a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to loosen this nut here and we're going to put some oil. We're just going to squirt some oil right in here, right there like that. Okay, we're just going to squirt some oil in there. And we're going to use a crescent wrench and we're going to turn this shaft. So we're going to turn it a little bit carefully, turning it a little bit. Okay, what that does is it gets some of that oil work down in there. And uh, sometimes if we'll, uh, we can see that just turning that a little bit, we'll actually start dropping that shaft a little bit or the housing on there. So we're trying to turn that and that gets that oil in there a little bit. This is going to be an easy one to get out if that's the case, okay? I know that sometimes we have another one sitting here. Looks like this. We have no hope of getting anything on there. Um, so we'll still squirt some oil in there after we remove the, remove the or uh, loosen the nut there. And hopefully it'll penetrate a little bit, but it doesn't do a great job. So uh, we'll look at some other things on that. Okay, so we're going to assume that this is not sticking out of there on your type of furnace. Um, if it does, it so helps a lot. You can turn that with that grease in there. It breaks it free a little bit. But sometimes when they're flat like this, um, there's no way to get any greased or penetrating oil to penetrate enough to help us. So uh, what we're going to look at, we're going to stand it back up and we're going to move on from there. Like this. And we're going to get these, take these screws out of there, being careful to save those screws and washers, okay? This screw and washer, we're going to need to save those. Okay, so I've taken the three uh, screws and washers out of here. I um, had to get one out of the ground wire, and we've saved those old screws. We're trying also hard to save that inner piece right there, and this is the grommet here. So now we can see that basically we're loose. Um, the whole piece is moving around in there. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to be very careful. We're going to lift it up and we're going to flip the whole piece over and we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so now we need to talk about getting the shaft out of the squirrel cage here. Uh, we are going to need to loosen here. If you're the lucky soul that had a little bit of uh, the shaft sticking out of here, we were able to get some grease in there, turn the shaft a little bit, let some of that oil get in there, and sometimes it just comes right out. Uh, but sometimes it's flat on there, we can't do that, so sometimes we do need to knock it out of there. Might get some criticism for that, but, uh, um, be, but not everyone wants to buy a special tool to get that out of there. I can show you what that tool looks like, which we use. But if you're going to um, try and knock it out of there, make sure you are right dead center on this, okay? If we get right here, we're going to make a little mar that makes it so it can't get out of this machined edge right here. So we're going to whack it straight down right there in the center of it. And we're going to be really careful to position our tool each time. If you're uh, 
this gets over here like that, bad. Right down at center, we're going to elevate the whole unit off of the ground. Sometimes you can put a 4x4 pieces on there and then uh, making sure to stay off of the legs of the belly band and then it'll kind of give it some room to move the, the motor as you whack it back down. Um, what we use is we use this tool here. Let me get a little closer there. This is the tool that I use. Works so great. Um, a friend of mine, Eddie Pastore, got that for me. Um, and so what happens with this tool is you just have to remove this, uh, this, the nut here that holds that in there. This goes right over top of it. You screw the Allen wrenches on there, and then you put a crescent wrench here, and then you just start screwing down. Pushes it right out of there. Works, works really good. So um, we'll uh, work on getting that out of there. And what I've done is I've elevated the shroud here. And we can see making sure to stay off of the legs of the motor okay so what i've done staying off the legs of the motor so that when i do hit it down it'll actually give this space to move down okay by far the best tool i found to remove these things is this here uh, it's a, a a tool my friend ed story got for me um it's uh, designed just for removing those. I'll get a little closer so you can see that part number and what happens is you just uh remove the the nut off of here this fits right over the top of that, right like that, uh, and you're going to have an Allen wrench. It comes with an Allen wrench here, and you just tighten these right on top of that, um, right in the center. You don't have to get exactly perfect, but uh, the best, the, the more center, the better. And then you put a crescent wrench right here, and then you just uh, ratchet this down, or you can put another crescent wrench on there and just get that all the way down. It pushes the shaft right out. You should only get have to move it about... Uh, about an inch or two before it'll almost fall right out of there so I mean the motor on the other side will fall right out so um, this is a tool that works awesome for this okay we've gotten the motor out um, looks like we're gonna need to loosen up or mostly remove these two screws I like just to loosen them almost all the way this motor will basically fall out and the new motor will go right back in basically the same way um, it does some of the new motors come with uh, the new plugs might get some criticism for that, but I feel like it's okay to reuse the same plug here. Um, we'll cut the, the old wire somewhere up here, uh, and we'll splice this into the new wires. Sometimes motors just come with the two wires with uh, just bare ends sticking out, um, if that's the case. I um, just uh, want to wire nut them onto this. doesn't matter which side goes to which side on that. Um, so we're going to be careful on this uh, Coleman one that these little pieces in the middle make sure that those pieces stay intact that keeps that grommet there in place so there's three of them we can see just make sure to to keep those in there and keep them safe okay once we've done that we're going to tighten this up about as hard as we can uh, make sure it's real tight make sure also this one's down a little bit I like to see this more in the middle see that's kind of more this way I like to kind of see it just right there real tight um, and what I do is before I'll do it I'll get it as tight as I think it's going to need to go get them both tight really super tight I'll stand it up like this and I'll give it a push down like this I'll push real hard down there and see if it moves at all if it's going to do any kind of movement then you know it's going to slip when it's on a under torque so you're going to go on to screw those on really tight for that okay and then we're just going to reverse that process getting it put right back in there okay Okay, now's a great time to clean this area up. A couple of wet uh, rags and a air compressor is best. We're going to flip it over, getting ready to put the, the motor back in place. I want to, uh, there's two different ways of doing it. I like to make sure that this nut is not in the way at all. When you look down there, there's no part of the nuts of, um, that you can see. Sometimes, um, if you leave a little bump in there, just a tiny bit of a bump on there, um, it'll hit the shaft uh, flat part and kind of help it line up as it goes in. Because we can see on the shaft, there's a little flat part. And as it goes through, it'll kind of keep that in line there. For me, I like to keep take it out of there and try to line that up later. But we'll look and see what that looks like, okay? Putting the old motor back in, we're going to just push it right back in the same way it went out. Okay, we're going to put that right in there. We're going to... Uh, line up the holes we're going to screw those in place with our uh, with our old pieces there we're going to reuse those same screws okay and just uh, redo that process over again we can see that we got all the screws on there okay you got the sometimes this does have a uh, coming off of the new motor has a ground but sometimes it doesn't um, so if it does we put it in there like that um, sometimes it'll have a little capacitor we try to screw that uh, bracket that holds the capacitor on to here and then the capacitor will hold on to there um, so we're ready to flip it over and attach the squirrel cage to the shaft what I like to do is I like to turn it on its side 
we can see here that we just push this on. We'll look at what that looks like next. Okay, so when it's on its side, I, we can see that sometimes it's hard, hard to get that flat part to line up perfectly with this nut. So what I'll do is I'll push it all the way past, and then there's a little bit sticking out here. And I'll use a crescent wrench, and I'll line it, the flat part up with that nut, perfectly like that. And then I can push this in and out right where I want it, okay, and then tighten the nut down. And I want it basically in the center. Of course, it's, this is uh, pretty straightforward, not close to either side, so it's going to hit the housing. And and it kind of differs a little bit but so we'll put it uh, kind of right there where we can see some here and here and then it's of course not hitting when the motor is installed you're gonna get a little bit of in and out on the shaft that's normal never up and down on a shaft like up and down if it wobbles that way bad bearings in and out on every motor it's gonna do that okay so what we're gonna do I'm gonna line that part up we're gonna tighten this down here okay we're gonna get that pretty tight Sometimes it'll take a minute. Okay. And again, we will have some in and out movement. That's totally normal on a motor. Up and down bad, in and out totally normal. But we want to make sure that even though it does move in and out, it's not hitting on any of those things. Should be good to go. Once we, uh, we put this plug back onto the new motor, we should be good to go to push it right back in and give it a test.